In this episode, we're going to handle 100 checkpoints or points that you need to check annually before a long passage. And you can also use it before you buy a boat. You still need a survey, but this can help you to find out in what condition the boat is. This is Captain Frick and his first mate, Pietru. We decided to chuck everything, leave the rat race and just embark on a new adventure. And that is our new home, Sisu. Join us on our epic journey as we sail the oceans, discovering new horizons, new cultures, new tastes, new flavors, new everything. It's just such a vast, vast world to explore out there. So please join us in our quest. Currently reporting from Iraq. <laughs> I always wanted to say that. But before we came here, um, we compiled all the episodes over a couple, uh, all this footage over a couple of days. And I'm going to show you tonight what what it is to do the hundred point check. First, just check this awesome wall here. So. Even though this video has been shot here, or actually compiled here in, in the United Nations compound, this does not reflect the views of the UN at all. It is just the views of Frick and Pietru on board of Sisu. Start with your passage planning. You have to get familiar with your routes. Um, and on the route, you need to start checking what is the prevailing winds and how the weather patterns change over time. And um, even if it is a trade winds, there's maybe a five degree difference every now and then. So check that out. If you're in higher latitudes, then maybe weather systems is coming in. So check, start checking that out. Also the current, what is the current doing? So that you know, if I'm going to anchor here, doesn't matter what the wind is doing, but the current will swing me around, stuff like that. Look for also for secondary ports. If if you go from point A to a point B, maybe there's a place to hide away if the weather is turning bad suddenly or uh, you break something. Um, so start looking for things like that. Do a general cleaning of the hull, the deck, the top sides with a mild detergent um, and make sure that it's not an acid thing that can harm the stainless steel or even on your uh, gel coat. The Leopard 35 has very easy scupper, so we can just walk around here and making sure there is no water or any any obstructions. Clean and polish the metal with a good metal polish. And if there is any sign of rust under a plate, remove the plate and remove the rust. Treat the metal immediately.
clean the hatches and make sure that all the rubbers are clean and no salt is in the in the folds. Clean your canvas, Bemimi and Dodger. Wait for a windstall day and clean your sails. Clean the bulges um, in the engine room. You must make sure that the, the water bulge is clean and also the oil bulge. Oops. The oil bulge is also clean. The reason to have the oil, the, all the bulges is clean. Yeah, it's, it's nice to have a clean engine room, but <laughs> more importantly, if something breaks, like I can see here. Here is a little thing that's lying in a bulge and I have no idea what it is but it means something broke off so I need to go and have a look what is this. In okay so while we have the water down here I might as well start cleaning down here as well eh? You need to check that your tools is okay and not rusted and if they are rusted you need to inspect them and maybe clean them and so on. So this looks good. And my set of Allen keys. They also look good and everything is in place. Um, yes, my metric Allen keys. So they are all in place. <coughs> Things like these, these ones, look, it is super rusty. So. I have to clean it and restore this one and treat it again with rust block. So inside here is all my spares that I do not want to get wet. And if you, uh, my policy at least is if I use one, I replace it. So if I do have a place where I can buy rather than use this, I will buy a new one and then take one of these and put it in so that we always have the latest or the newest or not like the rubber seals don't get perished or something like that. Make sure your registration card is on board. Your boat registration is there. If you are registered in a company and you know things like that, make sure that all the registration is on board and that everything is current. We have dive cylinders, so we have to check that they the visual is so on to date and all of them is checked. Every 10 years it's a hydro and every year it's a visual. So we can just open them up and look with a little mirror inside. But you have to do it also <laughs> through a technician. Check for hull abrasions or scratches and fix it. Um, and it's best done when you wash the boat. So if you wash the boat, then you can actually see all these things. And when I did wash the boat, I saw it and I marked it and of course it rained right after the wash. But you can see here, yeah, I make little marks to show where, where the abrasion is. And then you need to find all of them and fix them. One of the things is you might think you are, um, you've got an old boat, you don't have bubbles and so on, but you can also eat a fish attracting device or a log or anything like that so you also need to look at your hull sides and also if you're a catamaran you also need to look below here and last time when i washed i actually went with the with the dinghy below deck and i checked and we had no problems there new zinc so the zinc doesn't look good this is the zinc on the new props this is maybe Two months old. It's like kind of like eaten up already. Propeller, so it is nicely done. Check that. So we also need to make sure all the barnacles is 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 uh, it's nicely clean, it's nicely streamlined. A feathering prop. Oh, I'm checking also the rudder. I don't see any cracks here. No apparent leaks on that side. Uh, 
looks good here and also no leaks here so it is it feels good not no water here so got the new bottom paint it looks beautiful let's look at that everything done nicely and properly just look at that Check your stanchions, pulpits and lifelines for integrity. Also remember when you remove when you remove the stanchion, where the lifeline is going through the stanchion, you can actually see that there is a lot of rust as well. So you need to clean that too. You can see this one has a lot of play already. And how are we going to fix it? You see here is a little hole. And this little hole, we're going to put, going to put a screwdriver through. But make sure your screwdriver is, make sure your screwdriver is rust-free and there's no iron particles because that is stainless steel, and you don't want to have any iron on the stainless steel because the rust will come. And I'll do an episode on the rust very soon. There's also two lock nuts. And for us, it is a 13, so also make sure it's rust proof and we just need to unlock it and then tie it. Okay, so it's... One thing you need to make sure is the hole must be down so that the water can come out. So make sure both the holes is down and then you lock it. Mooring cleats. Look for any visible cracks. Make sure your anchor, your ground tackle is good and everything is in working order. Yeah, it's working. We recently used the swim ladder, so I'm sure we, we know it's working. But <coughs> you have to check the operation, whether it's working, whether it's secure, whether it's rusted, and that it is actually working. Uh, check for any leakages, and normally you can see if there's salt built up or salt running down, that will mean that the window is, is compromised. I normally just look here, inside here, and this window was leaking and you can see right over there there is a little bit of salt so we need to fix this window still and you can see it's like running down so it means this window there is problems here yep also check that the chain is okay in good order also check your swivel uh, I need to maybe change this wire here but the swivel looks good stop looks good and the cleat is good check the condition of the relay box as you can see I think I've got one relay that is going to be not good I need to replace this one Terminals is good and not rusted. Um, check the general condition of your. Of the screws, the mounting screws. And then I got a surprise. I discovered this broken bolt. We have to check the Davids um, winch. So here's the David winch and the lines is still good but i see i will need to be need to do some de-rusting so we need to make sure that all of this is off and also the terminals yeah the cable is good and the, the pulley is also good Ooh, not good light but yeah the line is good 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 Pulley, 
looks good. And then all the way to here. Wind it down and I put a rust block on all of the terminals. So the rust block is on the terminals and also on the drum, also on this little screws here at the back. Inspect your standing rigging. Um, we actually discovered a crack, or we think we discovered a crack on our top um, forward stay. So we, you start at the bottom, so make sure that the bottom ones is fine and the mast is fine and the mast will kind of like stay upright at least there. And you need to go up and you have to check on the top one as well. All the, where the, the stays or the shroud is getting into the mast, check those shackles, check those the way they are connected, check where they go into the mast. If there's any cracks or any of the, the wires or the cables that is twisted, whether that is actually not rusting or anything like that. And then also check and service your winches. <laughs> we serviced our winches, but we didn't take any videos, so sorry about that. But you need to service your, win your winches. Sea valve, the uh, sea cock. Here it is. Let's test it where it opens and closes. Yep, look for the sea cocks below the water line. If they are double clamped and they're good, let's check the operation of the sea cocks. So they're all good. If you look here, all of it looks good. I don't see any, any leakages here in the bulge. Not that I can. But I don't see anything on the. And over there, the cross member is good. Big stainless steel beam. Check your bulges, pumps for automatic and for manual operation. And the best way to do it is to actually chuck some water into the bulge and see that the floating mechanism is actually floating and that the water is going all the way through and all the alarms is going off what needs to go off. You also have to do the manual one. Is it going there? Check for the oil in bulges and find and fix the leak if required. Limber rolls. Check for the limber holes. That one looks good. That one also looks good. The soft start works. And since I've got many more batteries, check the other battery terminals. Here is the other lithiums, and they should not be rusted or oxidated. Look for chafing. So look for any chafing. Um, and they are pretty <laughs> bolted together here. Yeah. Looking at the battery terminals, the battery terminals looks good. No oxidation is happening, or not too much. And this is a AGM lifeline, so it's maintenance free. If you do have one that needs maintenance, check the water levels and things like that as well. Battery charger and inverter. Um, so we've tested it now many, many times while we were waiting. It's now currently on shore power. We also tested it with the wind chain. We also tested it with the, with the alternators. And it seems they are working. 
quick way to test your galvanic isolator is to look for a voltage drop over the two terminals. There is a much more intense way to test it, but for the purpose of this video, we will just test uh, the voltage drop. And why do you need a galvanic isolator? I will also talk about it in another video. So watch the space. So what? how do you test the galvanic isolator? So first, so the first thing that we need to do is we need to put our voltmeter on DC volt, first of all DC, and you can put it on 20 volts. Don't, you can put it less, but 20 volt is what I'm going to use. Then over these two terminals, we were going to test it. So we're going to test it like this, put that one there, don't touch anything else. And there's a voltage drop. Because there's a voltage drop, it means this galvanic isolator is actually still working. The ProSafe is actually complying to the ABYC um, standards. And, and the reason why this is compliant is that if there was a problem between, between the two faults, between these two stats, it will actually go to a closed circuit and not an open circuit. So if there was a closed circuit, this two terminals, the voltage drop will be zero. So you will still have your earth, which makes it compliant. But if there was a lightning strike and this one got damaged, and a lightning strike can be anywhere close to your boat. It doesn't need to be on your boat. So if this one got damaged, then there will be actually a short between these two terminals, which means you still have your ground and you still have your ground safety but it will just be shortened and your props and your zincs will just go quickly. So this is how we do a quick test. More about this one in another episode. And everything that's hidden behind the arm. And it looks okay. No visible Corrosion on the electrical wires. It actually looks okay. While we're at the shipyard, I also installed a bracket. So now you can see it's a nice steel, stainless steel bracket. It will the, the sheet lines can go past here. Yes, my jack stays. So it's outside. Um, and then the, the electrical wires will not get hit by or chafed by the and it was chafing right through here so it was not good check your instruments um, the ones that we normally use is of course the speed lock, the wind speed and also the wind index itself and we have a compass there, the heading is there and you can also see this depth and that depth is good. So over here we can see that most of the sensors are working. For the shore power, make sure that you can do the shore power. Check for Corrosion or burn. Look for any burned points, and yes, I discovered a burned point, so we need to replace this. And most probably this too. Ensure you have spare fuses of all sizes, spare relays, even light fixtures and spare spare light fixtures as well. And also water connectors, all sorts of water connectors that you may need. Um, even like restrainers and pump guards and 
just make sure you have enough of everything. <laughs> yes, even winch service kits. So make sure that you even have winch service kits. One thing we have to check is also whether the lights are working. So we can see those lights are working. These lights are working. We also got lights on the outside. Are they all working? And then also the internal lights. Another light that we have is a helm light. So let's see if this one is working. Inspect the antennas um, for any corrosion or, you know, a bird can even go and tamper with the thing or something like that. And while you're up there, check also your wind decks, whether it is loose and the wind meter can turn freely and, and stuff like that. So if you're up there, check it out. Okay, all the electrical wiring is over here. All the trap switches is good. All the electrical cables looks good. And I don't see any signs of water or leakages. Subwoofer looks good. No water or leakages. The way I test the exhaust fan, I just use a simple paper clip. And here's the switch. So all I do is I bridge here these two contacts. I thought I can fit everything in in one episode. We're now at point 50. <laughs> Believe it or not, it's 50 points already. So I will cover the next 50 points in the next video. So see you next time.